Hey everyone, welcome to Tales from the Long Box. Uh, well, I, yeah, I um, I keep debating on canceling this series because it doesn't seem like it gets a lot of views, but it seems to get more engagement. It's weird. It, I don't know. See, people seem to respond to certain things, and then I'm just kind of left scratching my head. What should I do? But anyway, I've got Wally here, of course, and uh, there's a chap may. Um, I know. Stay tuned for the, some stuff on that. Anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to keep going with it. Uh, I debated last week of stopping it. And um, I then I was going to record some. And then I had a rough weekend. So, yeah. Um, we'll just keep trudging through and see what ticks. But anyway, this time we're taking a look at... Eternal Warrior number 18. Remember Valiant. Now, uh, I could be wrong. I n Normally, most of the time I read these ahead of time before I open them up. This one I did not, in Action Lab I did not, because I kind of wanted to have a real reaction to those. This one, uh, in particular, because if I remember correctly, this right here is part of one of my favorite Eternal Warrior storylines. So let's find out, shall we? And we open up to what looks like a guy traveling on the road. Now, Eternal Warrior is, he's immortal, and so is his brother, Archer. I'm, I'm sorry, Armstrong, but uh, his brother is a lot more fun. And yes, okay, this is it, the 30 pieces of silver. So Master Dark was trying to get a hold of the 30 pieces of silver as the ultimate necromancer magical device. And, yes, Eternal Warrior had to fight his Dark Elementals, which were basically earth, air, fire, and water uh, with necromancy mixed in. Uh, pretty cool, I thought. Anyway, <laughs> I remember the earth one, and this is Jeff the Geomancer. Uh, later on, they kill him and have a dude with, I mean, insane muscles. That's when Valiant was getting really stupid. This is when Valiant was still holding on to the good. And you can see that art, that Barry Windsor Smith um, influence art. You know, that just, it just rocks, man. I mean, everything just looks good. Looks cool. And... As we move forward, let's see, yeah, this this was a pretty good one. I remember I remember this one being really happy with. What I didn't like about it was I do know it ends abruptly. It ends, it's only three issues long. I think it should have lasted for about five or six. Um, but anyway, and I think this might be the end of it. Yeah, because what happened was, was they lost one of the coins, and <laughs> without the coin, they could not go find the next one. And I'm wondering if this... It seems like the water guy was involved in that, too. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. I'm zipping through, trying to read real quick. I always liked Eternal Warrior, though. That was one of my favorite books from uh, that. Oh, yeah. And then there is... Uh, um, <laughs> who was that? Dr. Light? Not Dr. Light. Uh, Dr. Dr. Mirage, yeah, uh, that was a <laughs> very short-lived, that was, I could tell Dr. Mirage was the beginning, and they kept trying to come out with new shit every week, and yeah, it didn't quite work out. When I first saw Dr. Mirage, I thought, oh, this is kind of cool, because you were used to, at this point in Valiant, it seemed like every new book and new character was something special, um, right up until, I want to say it Hardcore was the last one. Maybe Eternal Warrior, but Hardcore maybe was the last really special one. And then, I don't know, it's just like then they just start throwing crap. I vividly remember Ninjak being the one I didn't like at first. I really hated that one. And uh, I, I read one issue and I'm like, what the hell is this? And yeah, right there's Ninjak in Secret Weapons. Secret Weapons was obviously a ripoff of Secret Defenders. And, yeah, I was getting too derivative at that point. It, 
it's unfortunate because Valiant was so big at that time. At this point, Valiant was poised to take the number one spot in number one co comic company. I believe at this point they took the number two spot, if I'm not mistaken. Some people say that's not true. I seem to remember it, but, you know, meh. Mandela Effect, I guess, and you know, people misuse the Mandela Effect, but that's besides the point. Uh, I do recall Valiant was pretty big there, and so was Image. Image was as well. Um, but Image, they really, when they started dying down, they died down fast. They nosedive. With Valiant, they seemed to trudge on a little bit longer, and the death did happen, but it was much slower. And I'm telling you, I go back and I reread those old stories, and I still love them. The original Valiant stories were fantastic. They were different, they were alive, they were fun, they were interesting. You know, Exo Man of War was one of my favorites because you had a caveman. <laughs> Not a caveman, but, you know, a barbarian in an uh, Iron Man suit, basically. It was just phenomenal. And the ideas were different and just great. Just great. And, you know, I want to say this was the beginning of the end right here. I don't remember it being quite so bad yet, but I do remember Eternal Warrior was the book I held on to the longest, I think. That and Solar. I held on to Solar out of obligation i just really liked that book when it came out and it went so south but i kept thinking they gotta pull this back together they can do it they can do it no <laughs> it, <wouldn't. laughs> it never came back from what it was love that book though one of my i would say my favorite from the valiant era was uh the first 20 issues of solar I, I can't remember. And of course, Solar and Turok and um, Magnus Robot Fighter. That was another one I loved. Uh, those really... Uh, those have a lot of property um, problems, rights problems right now. So they, they're not even being published anymore. Um, they did try to publish some of the Valiants later. I don't think it went too well. There was that Bloodshot movie that I never saw that I heard is really bad. <laughs> and uh, I've not gone near it yet. But I heard they were going to do an Eternal Warrior movie. I don't think they're going to do that now. Um, that, it's, it's a great concept for for a, for a movie, though. And I kind of wish they would. But, oh well. Anyway, good read. Good comic. Um, you know, <laughs> this was a fun time to be a comic collector. And, you know, I did draw a parallel once about the comic book industry at that time with the com the toy industry now. And it seems like all these indie guys are coming out and everything. And eh, Yeah, I hope history doesn't repeat. I really do. Because we thought this image, and I would even go so far as say Malibu. We thought those guys were going to take over superheroes. Really, there was a there was a at least six month period that it looked like that's what was going to happen, and then Marvel bought Ultraverse and just destroyed it. Uh, Image nosedive because people realized it was flash over substance, and this died because I I don't think they had any real direction, and and I'm not saying Jim Shooter was the savior of the company. I'm saying Jim Shooter probably. You know, at least had a plan. And he was going in a direction. And after he was outed, there was very little planning from that point forward. I think that makes sense. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean Shooter was the savior. But uh, I loved Valiant. I still love Valiant to a point. Uh, it's just some great stuff. Uh, just really, really good stuff. I still have most of my Valiant comics. I, I probably have this issue, in fact. Well, obviously I have this issue, but I think I still have the original of this issue. So, anyway, yep. That's Tales from the Long Box and Long Memories of the 90s. All right. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe and all the YouTube stuff. Bye, guys.